Uh, good morning. So a boxer's fracture is a fracture of the fifth metacarpal neck um, of the hand. So this study, uh, we compared the conservative management of plastering these injuries, which is the standard of practice at the Gold Coast, uh, with a more functional um, way of managing them. Um, so the boxer's fracture is actually a slight misnomer. If anyone here is actually a boxer, then it's very rare to, to fracture your fifth metacarpal if you punch someone properly. You'd expect to either damage the first or the second. Um, these are very common injuries in young working age men um, and they result in a significant amount of time off um, from work uh, and uh, social and sporting activities. Um, so there have been some studies done in this area before. Um, none of them have really been powered enough to show a difference between <coughs> casting versus functional outcomes. Um, so why did we repeat the study if it's already been done? Well firstly there is, to our knowledge, no um, study into boxes fractures in Australia in a local uh, population here. Um, and secondly, um, one of the key sort of points of doing research is that your results are, are repeatable. Um, and you may start with one outcome and then when you repeat the test over and over again, you actually find that you get something different. So um, we looked at adult patients presenting to the University Hospital and Rabina Hospital with fifth metacarpal fractures. Our intervention was um, functional taping of the ring and little fingers. And the comparison group was our standard of practice at the moment, which is uh, plaster immobilization. And we had several outcome measures that I'll talk about in a second. So patients presented, if they had a boxes fracture confirmed on x-ray on arrival, they were included in the study. We had several inclusion, exclusion criteria, the most important being uh, whether the um, hand itself was uh, whether the finger was rotated, um, but other exclusion criteria included age, so under 18 or over 70, um, and then things you'd expect like um, open fractures, intra-articular injuries, uh, or significant tendon injuries. So patients were randomised and then into one group or the other, and then the idea was to follow them up in the orthopaedic fracture clinic, um, and then by phone at 12 weeks, so around three months. Um, so there's the two hospitals. The, the randomization packs were in the fast track and minor injuries area of both sites. And, and when a patient was successfully identified and consented, they'd be randomized into the trial. Um, the intervention on the right is the functional taping. Um, so you can see that really all you do is tape the two fingers together. And that allows the patient to return immediately to work whereas the more traditional plaster cast, which is in a position of safe immobilization, uh, necessitates not really being able to use the hand as well. <coughs> Our primary outcome measure was the quick dash measure. This is a score from zero to 100 based on 11 questions. Zero is essentially no disability. 100 is metaphorically not having a hand. Um, so zero is best, 100 is worst. Other outcome measures included return to work and amount of time off work, return to sports and activities, um, and pain as measured on a visual analog scale, and satisfaction with the healthcare service. Initially, we also wanted to measure things like grip strength and range of motion, but due to the logistics and a few difficulties that I'll discuss as we go on, we, we didn't end up doing that. Uh, so we looked at, there were about 500 patients who presented with injuries suggestive of a boxer's fracture. Of those, 380 did not meet the inclusion criteria, so they actually had a different fracture confirmed on x-ray. About 40 patients uh, refused to consent, to consent for the study, and about 40 were missed, so uh, the clinician didn't think to include them in the study. Of those patients that weren't included, they had a similar demographic to the patients that were. We randomized 126, uh, about 60 to each group, and we had results for around 50 patients in each group for final follow-up. Demographics were as expected. These were young, um, young men primarily, so the average age was 26 years old, um, and 90% um, of the patients were male, 90% were right-handed. You can see that most of the um, patients were employed in a technical or trade industry, so manual labour, um, and about a third played a sport as a hobby. This slide just shows our primary outcome, which was the quick dash um, 
cha change in quick dash from week zero to week 12. Um, it, the, the blue lines are um, each individual patient, and then the, the change of the height of the line is the change in function from week zero to week 12. To visualize it in a slightly different way, um, you have on the far left of the slide the score at week zero for each group, and then by the time they re reach week 12, um, you have the score for each group. And basically what that shows is that the, the function improved over time, and there was no significant difference between the two groups. So we, sh we showed that hand function, whether you put the patient in a cast and immobilize the hand, or you allow them to move the hand immediately, was, was essentially the same at 12 weeks. This is just days missed from work and days missed from um, hobbies and other activities. And those patients in the buddy taping group um, returned to work significantly earlier than those in the past group. And there was no significant difference in the amount of time missed from hobbies and activities. Again, pain and satisfaction, uh, that patients had a higher score at week one and a lower score at week 12, and all patients were, were satisfied with their care, so there was no difference between the two groups. So um, what are the implications of the study and why is it important? I like to think of this in three ways. Um, there's, a, there's a benefit to the emergency department, a benefit to the hospital in general, and also a benefit, probably the most importantly, a benefit for the patient and for society. If we're talking about sexy studies, this is about as unsexy as it gets. Uh, it's not a big sepsis study, it's not a big trauma study, it's just a little small fracture of the fifth metacarpal. Um, but these injuries take up a large amount of time in the emergency department. They necessitate a plaster technician to come down and apply the cast, um, and patients um, are waiting around and occupying bed spaces and in, in increasing overcrowding. So by just functionally taping them, we actually found that we saved about 30 minutes time per patient. And again, that was statistically significant between the two groups. So the buddy patients only spent, spent th on average 30 minutes less than the plaster patients in the emergency department. Um, on a wider hospital basis, these patients, these are very common injuries and they take up a huge amount of time in the orthopedic clinics. And by taping the injury instead of putting a cast on, there's an option for these patients to be followed up in the general practice rather than uh, attending orthopedic clinics. They're also a notoriously difficult group of patients to follow up. Um, very few of them actually turn up for their outpatient clinic and it's one of the reasons we didn't end up measuring um, fun uh, more um, objective findings. Um, so if you can reduce your, your patient load in the orthopedic department for a group of people that don't really present anyway, um, then that saves a huge amount of time for our orthopaedic colleagues and also for the plaster technicians who can concentrate on more important injuries that, um, that do really need a cast. But most importantly, these patients return to work more quickly and these are young working age people who uh, this represents a significant loss of earnings for if they, don't, um, if they don't turn up to work and then the wider economic impact of not being able to work. Um, so we think overall that, you know, that even though this was a small study on an injury that, that is, it, m people might think of as being insignificant, there, there are some wider implications and, and it does have um, a great benefit um, in, in the change in the way that we're going to manage these. So I'd just like to thank the, the EMF for the grant that they provided for the, for the study and also um, to Amy, Amy Sweeney who did a lot of work on our statistical analysis especially towards the end of the study, and also to Gerben, who was the main supervisor, uh, and who, his support was crucial in getting everything done. Thank you.